Hey everybody, it's Gil here aboard the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in last week's episode, we finished getting that last window rebedded back in the coach house. We used safety glass, and we got that all set in. I also took you along for a little trip back to uh, my dad's house in New Jersey. Uh, did a little bit of reminiscing on helping him build it, and some of the little things that were around his house, and how we went about doing, doing that 35 or so years ago. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you didn't see it, I'll put a link right up here in this corner for you, and you can check it out. This week, we're going to do a little bit of general maintenance on Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. If you have a boat that has uh, air conditioning or water-cooled refrigeration, this is something you likely do already, but I'm hoping that this is a little different. We're going to show you one of the tips and tricks we use to help get airlocks out of those systems after we finish cleaning the sea strainer. So we'll show you the process we go through. And as usual, I have my little helper with me. So Swab decides she's going to go ahead and help out. Uh, I'm impressed with the things a five-year-old is learning about boats and boat maintenance, just watching us do all this stuff. It's kind of neat. Um, and she decides to go on a little adventure she wanted to do a little bit of spelunking and uh, well the cave turns out to be something interesting hope you guys enjoy this week's video today it's time to do a little bit of general maintenance aboard sailing vessel dream chaser if you have uh, reverse cycle air conditioning and heat pumps on your boat you'll know they have water circulation that's ultimately what keeps them uh, cool or warm if you think about that unit that sits outside of your house with a central air unit you know in the summertime when the air conditioner is running it's blowing hot air out and that's because that's an air cooled system it takes the air from outside sucks it through all those coils and blows it up and out the top well on a boat it's sort of an enclosed space there's not a place to have that outdoor unit typically so we have water cooled ones and what that means is rather than sucking air through those coils we actually suck cold water in or water from the, under the boat into a system it goes through a series of copper tube pipes and that's what ultimately pulls the heat out of that unit and then pumps it out overboard and over time, what ends up happening is those strainers where the water sucks in captures all kinds of garbage and gunk. So here in the Chifuncta River, one of our boat neighbors refers to that as the Chifuncta Funk. So we're going to have to clean some of the Chifuncta Funk out of our water strainers. But pretty routine maintenance. Um, when we were in uh, Kima, frankly, we had to do this about every two weeks here. It, we can get away with every couple of months, surprisingly enough. And it's just sort of some silt and grab, uh, it's kind of garbage in there as opposed to actual um, organic growth like you know when we were in chemo we would pull little minnows out of there and stuff like that from time to time so yeah and when I say you know, little tiny tiny things but anyway let me show you how we go about doing it. it's pretty routine maintenance if you have a boat chances are you already know how to do it but it's part of our life aboard so away we go oh and the little one wants to do a little bit of an adventure so I talked her into doing some spelunking um, she actually wanted to go explore a cave so I am um, not wanting to go explore a cave decided we'd call the bilge the cave. Let's do some spelunking. You know what spelunking is? Yeah. Cave exploring. Yeah. All right, let's it's do it. It's down in there. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Um, which way do you want to, you want to face your head that way? Okay. Turn and face me. Bend all the way over and we're going to get by your feet. Put your hands on the ground. Hands all the way on the ground. Ready? Shh. Keep your hands down. Keep your hands down until I get picked up. Hey. All right, ready? For me to do, baby. When are you gonna do it? Like after I kick in the sim. What is it going to look like? I don't like? know. Look, at, just put your head down and look. Oh my god! It's lower cool. or stop? Stop. Up. Up. Or down? D just straight here, cause it looks cool. Okay. Oh my god! Up, 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 up. That was crazy. Hands down. Hands down. That was crazy in there. Yeah. I saw the red thing. The red things? Yes. What are the red things? I don't know. Hmm. All right. We're all the way back there. So we're down here on the floor. We got our head right over the hole where McKinley just was. And the first thing we're going to do is turn off the water inlet, right? They call that a seacock. Okay? We're going to turn off the seacock. Got it. You know why we do that? Why? That way the water doesn't come pouring in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> that seems like a good idea, doesn't it? We'll close the seacock then. So we'll close the seacock. And then we're going to open up the strainer. We'll show you that in just a second. Yep. With the seacock open, it's now time to unscrew this canister and we'll remove the strainer for cleaning. And boy, you can sure still see all of the sawdust and garbage that's down in here. I started painting most of the bilge forward, but I never did get to this section here. Right there he's talking about right there. How did you know that? Because I saw it in the cam camera. Uh -huh. You were pointing at it. Okay, well, good. All right. So, 
I stuck my head down in there. Then he picked me up. <laughs> you did, huh? Yep. Remember that time you got the tools way down there when they, I dropped the tool way down there and I dropped you all the way down below that prop shaft? Mm -hmm. That was cool, huh? Yeah, but can you do that sometime over there again? Sure. All right, first thing we're gonna do is come down here and turn off the water inlet. Ew. There we go. You wanna see where that is? Yeah. All I right. saw it. I saw it then. So it's long and yep. green. Long and green. Got it. Well, and dirty up there. Now that we got that off, the red we're gonna. Thing is... Get a little ball right here. Catch it. Mm -hmm. Ew. Just I water dripping out. I thought that was like I thought that was that was sand. Mm -hmm. All right, watch out a minute. Good. All right, pull that out of there. It's a lot easier to stand up and do this stuff at the sink. So uh, I do this in the galley sink. We have good hot water on this boat, so it lets me kind of clean this thing out. If there were obviously a big chunks of growth, I would get rid of it, throw it in the trash or whatever, throw it back overboard. Uh, but in this case, it's really just this fine dirt sort of stuff. So I just need to take a little brush, scrub it off, and rinse it. And frankly, this just goes right down the galley drain and out the side of the boat uh, because you'll see in a minute just how fine it is. So you can see here, I just used this small bucket you saw me do, and then, um, frankly, this isn't too bad. When you look at the screen, it's nasty, but there's not like a large chunk of growth or anything on it. So it's just some warm water running over this. The good portion of that will be cleaned. And then even on the inside of this, while, while it's certainly dirty, it's not horrible at all. So uh, I think I think my wife won't want to kill me if she sees me doing, sees me doing this. Right, Deb? So Deb, you don't mind if I clean this in the sink, do you? No, I do it all the time. But don't you dare use my good dish towel. <laughs> I will not use her good dish towel, but I do have to show you the dish towel she uses. This is it, and I know we don't have a lot of female viewers, or at least not subscribers. That right there is something that Deb um, saw talked about on the Women Who Sail group on Facebook. Uh, it's amazing. It's got all these little sort of openings in it. It doesn't grow any bacteria or anything. So once we wash the dishes with it, we either just set it right on top of this little glass cleaner we keep in the sink. Um, we set it there just to air dry or we hang it over the top of the of the double sinks and it, it airs out. It cleans. It doesn't get stinky. If you've ever had a sponge or anything else in the boat, you know just how nasty they get. That thing is phenomenal. We'll put a link down below in the descriptions for where we get it. They're cheap. They're on Amazon, but they're phenomenal if you have a boater. So back to cleaning this thing out. We're just going to go ahead and get this stuff dumped out. And again, you can see it's not, it's not bad in the sink here. It's just not all that nasty. So just a little bit of scrubbing with an old uh, toothbrush or something like that um, and running some hot water on it cleans this thing out pretty good. This screen is in rough shape. I really need to get a new one, but it still works well enough. And then obviously just clean the sight glass out too. And again, it's, uh, it's in good shape just for my little Groco water strainer. So away we go. We'll go pop this thing back in place. All right, we got that cleaned out in the sink, and what are we about to do? Put it back in. All right, and then should we make sure it doesn't leak when we turn on that seacock? Yeah. Yeah? You don't think a leaky boat's good? <laughs> I don't think so either. Put this back in here. Yeah. And this is a little tricky. Yep. Because this is so deformed, yes. I gotta make sure it fits on the bottom, yes. in the bin, Yes. And then make sure it goes right in yes. the right spot. Yes, 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 yes. That's uh, so right. Isn't it, camera? <laughs> I called you a camera, Grandpa. You did? Yeah, I did. All right, got that tightened. But what's the plan, camera? All right, we're going to open up the seacock. Where's the seacock? It's way over here. <gasps> Um, it feels like that might be leaking, huh? Yep. It's leaking. All right. We tighten that up now so it doesn't leak. Yep, still leaking. That's leaking. Let's see what we got going on there. So here's our little trick for priming the pumps. Right between the filter strainer and the actual pump, we have this small T-valve with a garden hose attachment. 
what we can do is open the seacock and open this valve and water when the water starts to flow out I know I'm fairly closely primed to the pump however it's not all the way so I hook a garden hose up to our deck washdown pump and I just turn the pump on essentially it forces water into the hose pushes the air through the actual pump and out the side of the boat and then I know I'm primed I can kick on my uh, air conditioner or motor and then turn this valve off and disconnect the hose it's a really easy way to prime it I've also seen people use a squeeze bulb kind of like you have in an inline fuel pump on an outboard motor but I don't like doing that because if that dry rots or anything over time this is uh, in a place where it could potentially just open up and let water flow into the boat the nice thing about this valve the way I have it set up is once it's off it's off pretty well it'd have to be a fairly catastrophic failure for that to break free and allow water to flow in that way short of any other line on the boat now I just turn off the valve with the air conditioner pump running, go up top and look over the top to make sure I have good water flow on the discharge side. And I do. Okay, one to go with the rear stateroom air conditioning and heat unit. And now we're just going to do the one that feeds the forward air unit. And that one is located right here underneath the galley sole. And what's funny is I painted this not too long ago and you can see the string there I used to hold all the hoses up while I was painting so that it wouldn't fall down into the actual wet paint. <laughs> I guess I could pull that out now. So just like the process before, it starts with turning off the seacock, and then I usually like to get a drip bucket of some sort. And you'll notice they're never a good place to put it directly under it, so just hold it kind of close. But on this one, it's a different style. I unscrew the tap of it, and um, and then just lift the strainer out. And it's kind of interesting. This one has sort of an offset stem that the water comes up, and then it flows down into the filter basket and ultimately out the discharge side of the housing. But you can see it was pretty nasty. It took a minute to actually pull it out of there. And what I'm now doing is just reaching my finger in the actual inlet pipe and just rubbing my finger around in there to get some of that um, thicker crud out and put it into this little bowl. I keep an inexpensive toilet brush next to every one of my sea strainers and I just use it each time to clean the canister out. It works great. So this one is definitely a little nastier. I've got some, some downright grass and growth coming in this one. This one's definitely nastier. Um, my guess is when I start the engine and I kick it into reverse every once in a while, I probably kick up some of this garbage off the bottom of the, the riverbed here and it kicks up into the air conditioning unit a little bit. This is the beauty of this, the strainer catches all that crap. And now it's really just a matter of reversing the process. So I'm putting the C strainer back in here and um, you'll notice what I do is I lightly put this lid on. I don't tighten it all the way and then I open the seacock. And the reason I do that is you can get an airlock if not. This one actually primes better than the one in the back, so there wasn't a need to hook a hose up to it. So I turn on the seacock, and as soon as the water starts flowing out around the threaded edge, then I just tighten it down the rest of the way by hand. I kicked on the air conditioner and made sure that the discharge side was working fine, but I love the fact that my little helper here likes to get involved in some of this. She asked if she could come down here and look, and what she was saying to me is she was pointing under the floorboards toward the aft side of the boat, saying, that's where my head was. <laughs> So as I mentioned in last week's video, I'm back up here in New Jersey and I decided this week to go ahead buy some of my childhood locations, right? The house I grew up in, the middle school I went to school in, the elementary school I went to. I can't help but be struck by how small everything is. As an adult, they just look tiny. But as a kid, I remember them to be huge. I feel like I rode my bicycle miles after school every day. Turns out it was blocks. I feel like I feel like there was this big waterfall by us. It may as well have been Niagara Falls. It's kind of a drainage ditch that runs downhill. But as a kid, it was huge. I feel like the church I went to as a kid was this ginormous, intimidating building. As it turns out, it's tiny. And frankly, it's been added on to since I was a kid. So I hope you guys enjoy this little look back at nostalgia for me. Um, it was interesting. And, and maybe, maybe you'll find it interesting too, show you a little bit about where I came from and maybe who I am. But it's been a fun, it's been a fun time to go and visit some of those little sites like that. I'm gonna drive into Brick to the house where I grew up. Uh, it'll be kind of neat to just see that real fast. It's been years since I've gone by it. So I'm at Ocean County College, which is between Bricktown and Toms River, New Jersey. And I can remember as kids, my parents would take us to the college here and this, you know, it looks like such a small hill right now, but as a kid, this was a mountain. We would go sledding over here. So we'd bring the, bring the car and the sleds over here and we'd go up to the top of this and sled on down. And if you look this direction, you either could go the steep route or you could take the nice long trip down this way. And you know, if you got into the parking lot, you would go all the way down into the, into the parking lot and across that as well if it wasn't plowed. So that was always fun. This was our street right here. That little gray house right there is the one that we grew up in. 
first girl I had a little crush on lived right over in, in this little yellow house. A girl named Andrea. I won't forget that. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had a job. I worked for a guy that had this house right up here. He had a little catering business. He had one of those roach coaches. And we would, I would clean his truck. But this is that little creek. We would, we would come into this little tiny swampy creek right here and just have a blast racing little boats down this and stuff. I talked about the little creek we would play in and this little sewer grate on the left is actually where it would go through. And there's a section where it was right over in there. And we would come through that and go underneath the road right there. You can barely see the little creek down there, but then we would be all kinds of playing down in that creek right there. I turned around, I'm coming back down the street, the little gray house right there at the curve is the house we grew up in. And uh, this, uh, this house up on a little bit of a hill right here with the carport in it. These are my good friends growing up, the Montemurnos. <laughs> Pretty neat place. We would ride our bikes down through here. There was a kid that lived down here that had a golf cart. And the funny thing was, he would be the one that would take the golf cart in the bike trails that we would always have. <laughs> His parents would probably have a fit if they ever saw some of the things he did in that golf cart. Right up here on the right, there used to be a little playground right here. And we would ride our bicycles up there and play in it. They had those little spinning merry-go-rounds and this, these monkey bars that were shaped like a caterpillar. I can remember using that all the time, too. I suppose these houses were probably here way back in the day, but I'd be darned if I remember it. So we used to ride our bikes up here. This is the Lake Riviera Middle School. We'd ride our bikes up here and bring a golf club. Sometimes we'd, we'd hit golf balls. In the summertime, they would do roller hockey over here. They would set up these uh, roller hockey rinks, and that would be roller hockey. And in the winter, they had put this little deal up that they would essentially fill with you know, a few inches of water, and it would be ice hockey. Been fun memories checking this all out today. I hope you all found this week's video interesting. I hope that sea strainer um, maintenance part of the video was helpful for you. Like I said, it's a common approach. And if you have anything that's water cooled on your boat, what we did for our air conditioners and heat pumps would be the same that you would do with a water cooled refrigerator, a deck washdown pump, your engine or generator strainer uh, for your water intake. It's all sort of the same. But the little tip and trick on how we uh, reprime the pumps is really sort of helpful. It's worked well for us and avoided us having to relocate things. So that was uh, that was at least helpful for us. I hope it is for you. It also looks like I'm probably going to be in New Jersey longer than I initially thought I was going to. Uh, I'll spend a little bit of time in the video next week and I'll kind of explain a little bit about what's going on, kind of what's happened here. And um, and then, you know, it'll just give you a little bit of insight into it because you'll notice I'm, I have the last couple of videos have been a bit of a split with, you know, boat maintenance work that I recorded um, versus where I am now. Right. So the boat maintenance stuff was a few weeks ago and, and then these intros and outros, you know, are, are current right now. But that's the way I'm having to do it. And like I said, next week, I'll have a little bit more facts, a little more detail, and I'll be able to share with you guys kind of what's going on, just so you know. From myself, Deb, and the Grand Squids, back aboard Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, safe sailing, everybody. We'll see you next Friday.